You're getting ready for Praxis Mathematics 5165 Functions and Calculus, choosing appropriate function models, interpreting slope, intercept, real-world function use. Need a little extra practice? I have a video that I think may be helpful. My name is Tom, and I'm a test prep expert here at study.com, and I will walk you through some of the problems you may see on the test. In this particular video, we're going to focus on functions, slopes, y-intercepts, and throw in a trigonometry problem. Don't forget to pause and try these yourself. Let's get started. Printing machine can print 50 newspapers in a minute. Newspapers are sold at $4.50 each. The printing machine is running continuously for four hours. If the variable cost for the materials of a newspaper per piece is around 10 cents and a fixed cost of $2,500 per day for labor production and transportation, how much profit is earned per day? Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to set up a variable that represents newspapers. So I'm going to say X represents the number of newspapers I sell a day. So we know that our printing machine can print 50 newspapers in a minute. And the printing machine is running continuously for four hours. So if I take four and multiply it by 60, I'll get 240 minutes. And if I multiply that by 50, I'm going to get 12,000 newspapers I can make in that time period per day. Okay. So now I want to figure out the profit function. So the profit function, P of X, is going to equal my revenue function, R of X, how much money I bring in, minus my cost. So C of X, the cost function. All right, so what we need to do is we need to figure out our revenue function. So how much are we bringing in? Well, it says newspapers are sold at $4.50 each. So that means I get 4.5 times X every newspaper that I sell, okay? Minus my cost function. Now my cost function is gonna be my variable cost plus my fixed cost. So that means it costs us 10 cents each per newspaper. So it'd be 0 0.10 times X Plus, I also have to pay these fixed costs per day, so that's going to be $2,500. Now, since this is a fixed cost, I'm not going to um, multiply it by X. It's just cost for my labor production and transportation. So this is my profit function here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my profit function, and I'm going to plug in my 12,000. So P of 12,000 is going to equal 4.5 times 12,000. That'll give me my revenue minus 0 0.10 times 12,000 plus 2,500. We should be able to use our on-screen calculator in order to make this calculation. And if we do this correctly, we should get C, $50,300. The graph of the function f of x is shown above. Which of the following equations shows the function slope and y-intercept? All right, so we have two graphs. We have the green graph, which is f of x, is what we want to focus on. And they also give us g of x here, but we're not going to be using g of x. So we know in slope-intercept form that the equation would be y equals mx plus b, where m represents our slope and b represents our y-intercept. So looking at f of x, I can see that it crosses at negative 1. So my b value must be negative 1. So that's going to eliminate choice b and choice d, which have positive 1 as their y-intercept. So we just need to figure out the correct slope here. Is the slope 2 thirds or is the slope 3 over 2? Okay, in order to get our slope, I'm going to use points where we cross at whole numbers. So I'm going to use my y-intercept, 0, negative 1. And I'm also going to use the point 3, 1. So to calculate my slope, remember slope is rise over run. And if we see here, we're going a run of 3. So we have 3 at the bottom of the fraction. And then we go up 2. So the slope must be 2 thirds. So the correct answer here is choice A. Given the following function, y equals 2x squared minus 7x plus 8, which of the following represents the y-intercept? All right, so in order to get the y-intercept, what we're going to do is we're going to plug in x equals 0 into the function and figure out what the y-value is. All right, so that means that I could automatically eliminate choice A and choice D because those are x-intercepts, okay? So I'm going to plug in 0 into my parabola 
I quadrat it, so I get 2 times 0 squared minus 7 times 0 plus 8, so we're going to get y equals 8. So in this case here, the y-intercept is the coordinate 0, 8. Use the following image to answer the question. Which of the following equations accurately models the sine graph above? Okay, so now in order to do this, we're going to use the general equation for a trig graph or sine. So it'd be A times sine, parenthesis, and then we're going to go B times X minus C plus D. Okay, so now the A represents the amplitude. So what we need to do for the amplitude is we're going to take the max value, which in this case here is 5, and the min value is negative 1. So we're going to say 5 minus negative 1 all divided by 2. So that comes out to be 6 divided by 2 or 3. So the A value is 3. So that means I can eliminate choice A and choice D because they have an amplitude of 2. All right, so the next thing, let's look at the B value here. Now, there is no C value. So we can see the C value here. That is a horizontal shift. So this graph has not been shifted horizontally, so we don't have to worry about the C. Okay, so we need to find the B value. And what we're going to do, we're going to take 2 pi and divide it by the period of our graph. Okay, so we need to figure out the period by looking at the graph. Well, I can see on here that I'm not getting a full snapshot of one cycle of the sine. So if I extended this out, this around here would be one cycle of this sine graph. So I can see one hump here of the sine graph from here to here is 2 pi, this distance. So that means the period of my sine graph here would be 4 pi. So that means if I divide 2 pi by 4 pi, the pi would cancel and I would get 1 half. So that means my B value is a half and the only choice on here that would work for this would be choice C. So the correct answer is choice C. Let me show you how to get the D value, um, which would be the, the vertical shift up. To get the D value, to get this answer a positive 2, what we would do is we would take the average of the max and the min. So what we would do is we would say 5 plus negative 1 over 2, which would give us positive 2 as our answer. So the correct answer for this is C. Okay, there you have it. Practice Mathematics 5165 Functions and Calculus, Choosing Appropriate Function Models Interpreting Slope Intercept Real World Function Use. For more practice, check out our Practice Mathematics 5165 playlist, and for even more detailed practice, strategies, and customizable study materials, head over to study.com and check out our Practice Test Prep course. Those who use study.com boast a 92% pass rate. Our courses include full-length exams, hundreds of authentic practice questions, and short, targeted video lessons, specifically developed based on the latest test updates. With our resources, you'll know exactly what to expect on test day. Like this video and subscribe to this channel to get all the latest practice test updates. And please leave your questions and success stories in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. Happy studying. Oh,